going on guys? Today we are doing the rear brakes on a 2005 Sprinter. Um, got the dual rear, rear wheels. So it's gonna be a little bit different than uh, the single wheel setup on the 2500 or the 3500, but pretty similar process all around. So I'm gonna go through start to finish. Also gonna do the brake shoes. I replaced the front ones and those were really rusted. Bolts were really tough to get off. So back's probably not gonna be any better, but let's get to it. Me and Kaylee just bought this camper van a few weeks ago and we are stoked. Um, it, like I said before, 2005 Dodge Sprinter and it was an old work van. We got everything cleared out and if you want to uh, see a little progress here, it's just a blank clear slate here. So my job is to get it mechanically sound before we start working inside. Step number one when working on brakes, chalk the front wheels before you jack up rear axle. So before you lift the tires off the ground, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, grab a 19 millimeter socket, crack all your lug nuts. All right, so next step for me, since I have a dually, Removing this hub that holds on the rotor. Um, if you have a single axle or a single wheel, you're not gonna have to do this part. Really nice to have that breaker bar. If you don't have one, get one. It's worth the money. Next off, just tapping this hub off. Because usually it's on there pretty good. Go. Set that off to the side. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the caliper. Um, 13 millimeter, just goes on that top bolt. Got your caliper right here, and then this right here is the caliper bracket. I'm gonna be taking off the caliper first, and then just resting it off to the side, um, which requires two bolts both 13 millimeter, one is right here, and the other one is just down underneath there. I'm just loosening up this last bottom bolt on the bracket. I've watched some videos for the 2500s. You might just have a single piston, so your brakes might look a little bit different than mine, but all in all, same process. So once you have both bolts off, you just wanna take a flathead screwdriver Slide it in behind there. Try to wiggle that guy out. If it doesn't come, no worries. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to um, loosen up the bracket, take the whole assembly off as one. Gently pry that off the top. This is what, when you wanna have something to, um, I just have a wooden block just set beside the brake here. I just took the caliper off the, the caliper bracket off the caliper there. One brake pad. I know they look like they're brand new and they pretty much are, but I'm doing all the rotors anyways. So might as well replace the pads too. This is when you want to inspect your boots. Um, they're the rubber pieces that help the caliper slide back and forth along the caliper bracket. You want to make sure they're not uh, ripped or broken or anything. Next off is this rotor which is very rested on, so it's gonna take a little persuasion and I'm not too worried about damaging it. If you plan on keeping your rotor and you just wanna replace your brake shoes, then uh, you might wanna use like a rubber mallet uh, or something a little easier to get this off. Yours might even come off really easily, but um, I'm gonna have to use a hammer, I know, because I did the other side and it was an absolute bear to get off, so here goes nothing. Uh, one quick tip before you remove your rotors is, um, there should be a little hole um, somewhere around your rotor. Uh, mine's on top here because it's a dually. Um, if it's a single wheel though, you'll have a hole along here and there'll be um, a little gear inside. And what you want to do is turn that gear and that will loosen up the brake shoes that are inside the rotor, which will make it easier for the rotor to come off. So um, how you loosen those brake shoes is um, you just get a small flathead screwdriver and then you want to find your, you want to rotate your disc until you can see, it's handy to have a flashlight, 
you can see the gear inside there. And you just want to stick your flathead in and just kind of keep on spinning it just like that. And you'll, uh, you'll kind of feel the gear rotating along there as you spin it. So after a lot of rotating and banging, just rotating and trying to whack that brake rotor out, I got it off here. So I actually have a seized parking brake, had it on the other side and probably have it on this side too. So I'm going to show you guys um, what to do in that scenario. Hopefully you guys can see that, but this is that gear that I'm talking about. So this basically like rotates. Mine seized so it won't rotate, but that spins. I'll show you when I put on the new one. This is one of your shoes, this is the other shoe. So those expand out when you hit your parking brake or pull up on your lever or whatever and um, tighten up on the inside of the rotor which acts as your parking brake. And mine are obviously completely rusted. What I'm gonna do here is basically just um, wire brush, clean all this up, take off those old parking pads and then I'll show you how to um, install new ones. There's the gear here, which the adjuster, it's called the adjuster wheel. There's a spring on top here, right underneath that. And there's also a spring on the bottom. So you're gonna wanna get some needle nose pliers um, and then try to get on those springs and release them from inside. There's also a spring on the back side and a spring on this side, which um, looks like that. And these are just hooks that hold the parking pad assembly back towards the brake. So there's a little hole. All right guys, so I got those brake shoes off. Wow, they were eroded. But the um, small piece on the bottom that actually pushes the rotors back and forth um, wasn't seized, which was uh, really nice. I'll show you what I mean by that. This piece moves freely. Um, I greased it up, pretty liberal amount of grease. That is what the assembly looks like. These springs um, push through the back and actually hook on these little holes. So they hold the assembly back in place. So you wanna get a little bit of brake lubricant there. And um, you just wanna put some lubricant on the parts where the um, brake shoes are gonna be sitting. Got the wheel in there, got the first spring in there, and I'm just gonna put this around the top. These little springs go around the back side, find that hole. Got the shoes on, got the whole assembly ready to go. I'm just gonna show you what's going on here. Um, so, got both pads on, this one and this one. Um, when you put this wheel on, you wanna make sure that it's facing downwards so water doesn't collect inside. You also want to make sure this is well uh, well lubed up with brake lube because these can seize up. Um, you can see the top spring underneath there. It's kind of hard to view but it clips on either side and then um, underneath there's also um, another spring just right. goes underneath there um, and then on the back you can see there's one of those springs that's the hole that it goes in. And then on the other side there is the other spring. All right, so before you put your rotor on, I like to um, get a little bit of anti-seize and just dab it around the outside here where the inside rotor face is gonna sit. And um, just put a very thin coat around the um, whole surface. Don't get the threads. Um, but just do the whole mating surface. Grab some brake cleaner, spray down that rotor because from factory it comes with a coating to prevent rust while it's sitting on the shelves. So. And then when you're putting on your rotor, try not to touch the surface that you just clean. You don't want to get it contaminated, especially any lube or otherwise on there. And then you just want to slide it on. Line up that little, there's a little hole there. I'm gonna grab my hub here, slide this guy on. Be sure to give these parts um, a good clean if they need them. Um, mine were very rusted, so I um, took a wire brush to them, tried to clean them up as best I could there, and 
yeah, also try and clean the bolts. Now that we got that rotor on and that hub on, we wanna go ahead and uh, tighten up or adjust the uh, brake shoes inside the rotor so they're just touching the inside. Um, a lot of people like to snug them up as far as they'll go. Um, and that's probably what I'll do with this one as well. So you just wanna spin that hole around until you can see that, uh, that wheel and then just start uh, adjusting. You can hear it just start to rub there. So I'm just gonna back that off a little bit and then that should be good. One thing I did forget to mention is you wanna make sure you popped your brake reservoir uh, in the front, in the engine, because when you push these pistons back in, it's gonna shoot brake fluid back up into the reservoir. So what we're gonna do now is uh, Grab one of these fancy little tools, they're about 10 bucks at uh, Canadian Tire, any parts store. And um, what they do is they just help push in the uh, pistons inside the caliper. So what you wanna do is grab one of your old, this is what I do anyways, grab one of your old brake pads, press it up against that, those old pistons, or the pistons on the inside there. Tighten it up and then just start pressing inside. Once you got your pistons all the way retracted for your brake caliper, you're gonna go ahead and remount um, the bracket. Brand new pads. A little bit of brake lube on the top and bottom. And then just spread that out a little bit. Be sure not to get any on the pad itself. And place that in there, like so. And then you wanna grab your other pad, do the same thing. Your sensor, right here. And um, this just slides in. You'll see the groove on the inside. You always wanna put it on the inside. I usually like to um, throw a little bit of brake lubricant on these too. When you're putting your caliper back on here, you wanna make sure that you feed your sensor through that opening on the back, first of all. Oh, which can be a little tricky to do on your own. Once you get those bolts started, you grab your 13 millimeter. And then last thing, once you have those two bolts that are holding on your caliper, you just wanna, don't forget to plug in that sensor for the brake pads just slides right in there. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. Give it a little wiggle. All right, so now you wanna go ahead, torque these down. Try and always do a star pattern when you're torquing bolts like this down. Grab your wheels. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned a little bit about changing rear brakes on a 05 Sprinter. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to hammer that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell because we're gonna be posting a new video every Wednesday on other mechanical stuff we're doing this van and the van build, which is gonna be coming up really soon.